on and some modern trapping uh, i'm going to backtrack a little bit and kind of go off what mike's already explained because i think that's one of the most important things we need to understand before we ever get into traps or hunting is first of all what's our target animal and have we studied enough to know what that animal does Where, where's its habitat what's it eating um, and all that good stuff so if, if you're hunting Where's my ambush spot? It should be, in my opinion, somewhere between the bed and the feeding areas. To catch them when the guards the most now. Once they get to the feeding area, there's probably more than one of them and there's eyes everywhere. So, one little twitch, at least where I tend to hunt, and the deer's A big difference, and I need to kind of throw both of these out there so we can understand it is I, I believe there's two types of trapping and that's modern trapping Which usually consists of trapping for furs, pelts, things like that and uh, that can do a lot for you in the way of feeding yourself if you're selling the pelts and being able to buy other things that you need and then there's survival trapping and there's a big difference between the two a huge difference survival trapping and a lot of the things that I've heard since I got here yesterday is using that resource to its fullest. So now you're not just trapping for that fur, for that pelt. You're trapping for the whole animal. So whether it's an animal you can eat and use the fur for something else, right down to the bones, right down to the guts, maybe for bait in another set. Does that make sense? It's good to be able to track. It's good to be able to understand the landscape through tracking and what different animals are doing. Again, to pick out your intended target animal. Uh, the one baseline that I like to use, which covers all of them, that you don't have to narrow it down to a specific food source, is something that we all need, and that's water. Water's huge, we all need it. So I like to start my focus first off at the water's edge looking around the water and you're gonna find everything there. Every animal's going there because they all need water. In modern trapping, they have all kinds of fancy things out there. They'll sell you whatever you think you need to include all this fancy crap right here. Fish oils and you know different types of lures, long distance lure, call lures to get these animals in hopefully to step on that trap pan or trip that trigger in that 220 conner bear or whatever the case may be. Uh, beaver caster is a good one for a lot more than just beaver. Again, it's just an attractive is all it is. In survival trapping, you have to get all that stuff on your own. So again, back to the water's edge. Another one that is huge that Mike already talked about is like frog guts and stuff like that. All that stuff is easy obtainable at the water's edge. You know, you can gig a frog just like that. I did it in Ohio. I think I got six within 20 minutes. It's just too easy. But that's going to get you going, putting bait in traps for specific target animals, stuff like that, raccoons, the possum. And that's usually what you're going to get in a set to begin with anyway. Until you weed those scavenger animals out, you may not catch your intended target animal. And just because you set a trap and say, this is a coyote set, you're more apt to catch a possum in that thing first. <laughs> Maybe even the first four times. It all depends how you're bringing that animal in, how well you've read the landscape to begin with. Does that make sense? So big difference between survival trapping and modern trapping. So I just want to touch on some of the stuff. Jim's going to get into, uh, you know, some of the tools of the trade, some different types of traps. We'll, we'll go over all that stuff. But uh, again, looking at the landscape, depending on what type of trap you're going to use, first of all, there's a bunch of different sets. You know, you could do flat sets, cubby sets, uh, dirt hole sets, snares. Uh, and typically with a snare, if you're just doing a blind set snare, it's going to be on some sort of run or trail, okay? And then you have to know, again, 
the target animal, well, how, head, how high off the ground is their head? You know, how are they moving along this travel route to get to that feeding area? Are they cautious and up? Are they down sniffing the ground to see what else has been there? You know, you, you gotta know all that stuff for a blind set. Uh, typically, what I like to do when I make a set, and you kind of have to abide by the law too, so you can't just put a trap in the middle of the trail. It's illegal. <laughs> so what you need to do for that animal is lure him into your set. Now, all your canines, you know, coyotes, fox, all that stuff, they're smart and there's nothing you can do to cover up your scent. It's just not going to happen. They're going to know you're there or have been there. The trick to that is try not to leave too much scent, but what are you using to attract them there? What's going to catch their attention and make that set irresistible to them? They have to go check it out. And uh, we call it BLT, which is bait, lure, and then turd. <laughs> and I, I picked one up. I don't know if you guys have seen it. And I have two dogs at works home. both ways. As soon as one of them takes a poop, the other one's got to go smell it. They live together, but that dog has to go smell that poop for some strange reason. <laughs> Coyotes are the same way. Fox are the same way. So if you got a nice fresh piece of meat just hanging out there for them, that may not, you know, draw them in as much as that turd next to it is going to. It, it gives that uh, sense of security. Hey, someone, someone else has already been there and checked that out. That draws them in all the more. So it's not just the bait. You kind of need the whole package there. You want to make your set off the trail unless you're survival trapping and then it's, there's no rules. So blind set snares, my opinion, number one set you can make with accuracy of catching something anyways. And back to the landscape tracking, doing everything we've done thus far up to this point. It's all it's all the dirt time. It's it's putting that stuff in. But with a trap, you're taking however many acres are here. Call it forty thousand acres for sake of purpose. And you gotta get that animal to step in like two square inches. Right, so the dirt time, putting in the, the tracking, knowing the habitat, knowing the tendencies of your target animal to begin with, is gonna allow you to place that trap and give you a higher percentage chance. Another thing with trapping also is soak time. And that, again, it go, all this goes hand in hand. You've done your homework, you've read the landscape, you know the pattern of this animal, but it may be, I know he's coming to this garden, but it seems to be it's every third day. So that trap needs soak time at that spot as well. It's not just, hey, I know the animal's coming here. I'm gonna put the trap and I'm gonna have them tomorrow. It's, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's just not, you know. That's why it's trapping and not catching. Uh, did I miss anything, Jim? No. I think Mike kind of stole my thunder. He pretty much covered it in the classroom. But I just wanted to, kind of go off of what he said because it's it's that important especially in trapping uh, as far as uh, survival or modern trapping is concerned uh, your target animal could change because it's not just the fur now if you're survival trapping you need to eat too so this critter right here one of the beaver I trapped actually in Beddington Maine that's a good size beaver uh, and that'll feed yourself for a couple, three days, depending on how you ration that out, you know. That'll feed a, a small family for a couple days. But you got a lot of resources there, too. You know, you can make something out of the pill. You can use the guts. I actually trapped the beaver. One, because they're easy. The beaver's probably one of the easiest animals to trap, believe it or not. But it gave me bait for my other sets. I use beaver meat for the coyote sets, the bobcat sets. That's where I lost my train of thought earlier. Mm -hmm. Cats, you need some type of visual attractant and it's gotta be up where they can see it. Not that 
the turd on the ground necessarily, but turkey feather, something like that, just blown in the wind by the set and they see that, that's going to get them over there. You know, not necessarily the call lure, the wild cat lure that you put on that set. That's just going to get them. Once you attract them from way over here, they're looking across that field and see that feather. Now they're coming. Make sense? All right, so that's pretty much my spiel. Again, between the two types of trapping, uh, again, Jim's gonna cover the different types of traps. Hopefully we can set up a couple different sets, and I think we have enough traps where you guys can set one as well. And we'll kind of watch over you, help you out or whatever. So that's all I got. That's awesome, thank you. Thanks.